Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be covering one of the best new aspects released this season, which is the Fleshette Storm aspect. This aspect is truly amazing and fun to mess around with if you enjoy launching yourselves into the air and shooting that wave of death and destruction, although not ideal for endgame or GMs. It does still retain some usages when used in the right area. I've decided that to make the following aspect even more better, we should make them explode on impact via severance and inflict even more chaos within the field we're in. With this and Monte Carlo, you can get explosive fleshette rounds which works just how you would imagine it. So let's get on with the good part. To start you're going to want to have into the fray where destroying a tangle or casting your super grants Wither Mail for nearby allies. While you have Wither Mail, your melee regeneration increased. You also then want to have Flechette Storm where upon sliding and using your melee attack, you can launch a cluster of damaging unraveling projectiles. Both these aspects are match made in heaven with how powerful both of them are when you add in just one fragment to help with getting Wither Mail easily. As long as you retain the Wither Mail at all times, you can get back fast melee energy within the 10 seconds you have. You can then further expand this with Monty to escalate this approach faster. Look into the fragments. Thread of Warding, where pick it up of Aura Power grants Wither Mail. Thread of Transmutation, while you have Wither Mail, Weapon Finder Blows will create Tangle. Thread of Generation, dealing damage generates grenade energy. And Thread of Continuity, increases the duration of Suspend, Unravel and Sever. Thread of Warding is a must if you want this build to work with or without the use of Monte Carlo. For newer players, this will work with Into the Fray aspect and as long as you retain its effects, you can get constant melee energy back. This means you don't need to use Monte Carlo if you don't have one and can instead just get a weapon with Pugless on it instead. A further transmutation is the same as this can also help with getting quick with a melt for free with any weapon you have equipped it. Outside of that, the following fragments left over are down to you, although the following is good to use as well. For the mods and stats section, we have a bit of freedom available in terms of what stats are best needed. How you go about this will depend on your playstyle, so for me, I'm playing quite aggressive, so I can make full use of the build in full. Our resilience is at a tier 9 for that 32% damage reduction, which can be added on to our 60% damage reduction via Woven Mail. This is going to help with us getting up close and personal and surviving more lethal hits that will usually take us out within a few hits less. The only thing you need to help support this area further is the Bolstering Destination mod, which can help with placing a barricade down faster but this is optional and dependent on the content being played. A discipline can stay at tier 6 to 7 as well, as we will be using it along with further generation and from the focus support. No need to go higher, as the regen rate we have for the following is spot on for getting fast grenades back in a pinch, and no additional mods are needed here either. Our strength is at tier 6 as well, and although it should be higher, with thanks to the aspects, fragments of Monte Carlo in play, we don't even need to get the following star as high as you would need it to be. Of course, if you don't have the Monty, then it's a bit different here. So having a tier 7 with Font of Vigor attached should help those who are new to the game or need a quick way for regen speed. While you're there, do add on the following armor charge mods to help support the build further. Charged up and stacks on stacks will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and will allow us to collect two charges instead of one. From here, you can add on the Connect Cypher mod and the Heavy Handed mod if you have the space to do so. I would then recommend the powerful attraction mod as this will help with getting our charge back fast when we use our class ability and automatically collect orbs nearby us. You then lastly want to have the Kinetic Cypher mod times 2 for that 17% damage increase and then the time dilation mod for that extra 5 seconds added on. Also, don't forget the hands on mod as well as you will be getting a lot of minis off. Now lastly, the weapons being used will be the Monte Carlo, which is the perfect exotic to use for any melee builds in mind. The following weapon will build up melee charges upon damaging a target, and upon successful kills, you have a 50-50 chance to get a full melee charge back. This is important as our melee requires 3 charges for us to fully unleash it, and although you can just use 1 or 2, you're not really getting the best out of it by just relying on this single usage. On top of this usage, it can also get a damage buff from kills made, so after a charge melee use, we will have a full on empowered weapon to use again to rebuild back our charges again. Now I know not everyone can get this, and I hope some of the things I recommended does help this out. For those that want an easy way to get Pug of this connect weapon, then the Autumn Wind and Randy's Throwing Knife from PvP is a good source of getting one easily after a few games. 
These are connect based and can work in the vast majority of content that don't require champion mods, which is something that can be easily done via subclass abilities to help out further. After that, I have a shotgun for the secondary slot, which helps a lot for when you're in close quarters range. I found that the basso or stinato with lead from gold and destabilizing rounds is a fun and interesting combo, as getting heavy will always keep this weapon afloat, and having volatile rounds for a shotgun makes certain ad clearing encounters a lot more easier to manage. Although having a weapon with swashbuckler might be better if you want to retain the strength after your charge melee, this is more down to you and what type of playstyle best fits you. Now, as the title describes it, having explosive flashet rounds for your charge melee feels like it should be banned in a number of countries, while also making a new entry in the Geneva Convention rules of don't you dare use this in conflicts. I knew from day one that the moment this aspect was shown that I would fall in love with the idea of releasing absolute hell onto a target, and boy did Bungie's team do well with this. Being able to launch countless waves upon waves of shell rounds at a target, which not only inflicts unravel onto a target, but also explodes on impact, is very nutty and downright insane to use at times. Using this in battlegrounds for example, is the ideal area to where you can saturate an area completely out in the open and watch how much damage you can do within a few hits. It's perfect for these type of content as this is where you want to use the following aspect to its fullest and see the results as well. So basically, nightfalls are to legend, legend missions, dungeons, battlegrounds and the new seasonal activities is where this build should be used the most and will excel the best in. However, one issue with the build is that using it merely in most content where there is no cover is where the build feels the weakest too. Although that's the point of the build as a whole, if you have too much enemies in one area and they are all looking at you and shooting directly at you while you're in the air, then that's a death sentence overall. This is why having a high damage reduction will help with allowing you to survive these lethal encounters, but it won't outright make you invincible. This is also why I don't recommend this in mass and above content as you will be torn to shreds. It excels well in vastly dense areas, but only if you know what you're doing. It's amazing and fun to use and I highly recommend everyone give this build a try, but heed my warnings about using it in higher end game content as it won't end well for you or for anyone else in your team. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like on the sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.